Rimi, about a hundred years ago in Russia, there was a kid, a son of the Tsar, that had a bleeding problem, and some magician, evil guy came in to help them Rasputin, and the people didn't like this. And maybe that's why we have had communism or something, but something about a bleeding problem with the kid, what's that all about? Well, that particular kid actually uh, happened to have uh, what's called factor eight deficiency, also known as hemophilia, uh, more probably, uh, more prob better, uh, hemophilia A. Um, it's a genetic disorder, and it's one of those genetic disorders where the mother is the trait, meaning the mother carries the problem, but the uh, child, the male child, has the problem. In some extremely rare occasion, a female may actually have that kind of an issue, but in uh, uh, most circumstances, it's the male. And in essence, what we're talking about here is a situation where um, the very complex mechanism of clotting, which is the mechanism that allows us not to bleed to death whenever uh, a blood vessel is injured, um, is damage is abnormal because one of the pieces, one of the little gears that uh, is involved in the process is abnormal. And the abnormality could be at different levels. I mean, the, it could be very mild, in which case the patient really has to have a significant bleed in order for us to recognize that there is even a problem, or it could be very severe. And those patients are actually the one, similar to the kid you were talking about, that actually develops bleeds without even uh, any trauma involved. And the kind of bleeds that are involved are primarily joint bleeds, but could be in the soft tissue, could be in the, uh, the muscle or in other areas like the brain. How is that treated? It's essentially uh, a replacement therapy. That is, there is a uh, protein, there is a factor that is abnormal in the blood. It doesn't work uh, or it's not there at all. And uh, we need to give factor from the outside. Um, a long time ago, the way this was done was by giving factor whenever a patient developed a bleed. Uh, the current uh, way to manage this is more aggressive. Uh, in uh, most, uh, especially young kids, we try to avoid injuries that are secondary to the bleeds that can occur. There is the so-called target joint that often develops in these patients uh, when bleeds occur one after the other because blood in a joint is uh, uh, something that irritates the joint and creates chronic problems uh, that eventually lead to that joint not to work at all. And so uh, what we try to do is to avoid the bleed in the first place. So we use prophylaxis, we use prevention, and a lot of uh, uh, kids, a lot of babies that have uh, factor VIII deficiency uh, are actually put on uh, replacement therapy uh, three times a week intravenously uh, for several years and some of them for an indeterminate period of time. This actually has, been, has become possible uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that the factor that we can use today is something called recombinant factor, it means it's not taken, it's not done by uh, taking factor from other individuals and purified, but rather is produced in the laboratory by bacteria that have uh, um, the gene inserted uh, so that it's a human product, but has, it doesn't come from humans. And that actually uh, solves all kinds of problems that have to do with the potential transmission of uh, viral illnesses through this. Since it's a blood product in the beginning and there was some concern, some of these kids, because it's a blood product, got AIDS, is that true? That is correct. Uh, uh, the problem with infection with HIV and the population of uh, uh, patients with hemophilia uh, in the early to mid 80s is probably one of the greatest uh, tragedies in uh, uh, medical history as far as I'm concerned uh, through the then ignorance uh, of the fact that there was um, HIV factor, I mean HIV virus in the factor, uh, we, uh, the physicians at large, ended up giving uh, HIV to a number of these patients. So the present treatment is pretty safe? 
uh, the current uh, uh, treatment is essentially uh, safe, um, meaning two things. One is that uh, the recombinant factor that I was talking about essentially doesn't come from humans at all. And so there is uh, absolutely no possibility of a transmission of uh, a viral agent. Um, those factors that are still obtained through a purification process uh, of a human uh, factor um, are uh, processed in such a way and treated in such a way that there essentially there is no transmission. So that the risk of transmission of HIV through factors uh, for this kind of conditions is essentially nil. Uh, and at this point, we really can recommend it. So with the proper treatment, the life expectancy of a person with this could be relatively normal? Uh, essentially what we're trying to do and uh, the expectation is that uh, uh, patients that are treated uh, with the standards of 2006 will have a, uh, a life expectancy that is likely to be normal and uh, a um, quality of life that is near normal. Uh, it is still a handicap, it is still a, a significant medical condition and the interventions that are uh, required are not minor, but uh, the expectation is that uh, a patient with uh, factor 8 at this point uh, will live a uh, long successful life.